On Friday the 13th, in July of 1973, a tornado touched down in Brighton. We'd like you to envision what it felt like that evening. So, close your eyes and listen. If you can, turn up the volume. What you will hear will last 32 seconds, the exact time that tornado was on the ground that day. I'm standing on the ground where Brighton's town hall once stood. In a matter of seconds, that once beautiful century-old building was destroyed. The tornado left a trail of destruction that was unimaginable. It reportedly touched down at about 100 Main Street and dissipated around 50 Main Street. But the storm that produced the tornado uprooted trees, damaged buildings, and took down power lines all over town. We're going to show you more pictures taken the next day. You will also meet people who remember that day and will share their stories. A tornado hit Brighton and it touched down um, all about uh, number 100 Main Street and around there. I, I got on my bike and uh, biked all over town and took uh, this whole series of uh, pictures. I mounted them and put a sign in the window, uh, one dollar each, place your order in the pharmacy, all proceeds to go to the Brighton Tornado Fund. And I suddenly noticed the quality of the air um, had totally changed. It felt like um, the air was very dead, but at the same time I could hear people speaking like clearly as if they were next to me over on Dufferin Street and I was on Perry so that was a very distance away and the sky had gone this kind of weird color and I didn't think anything more about it because at that point my mom came over to see if I wanted to go up to the grocery store. On the way up the street mom almost turned back because the sky had gone kind of green and it was just really scary looking we never see anything like that. So we walked inside the store and almost as soon as we walked in there was kind of a hubbub and we saw everyone running to the big plate glass window um, at the front of the store and we looked out and I remember seeing one of the canopies spinning down the street, honeydew melons going everywhere, these little plastic cups and things had become projectiles and were flying all over the street. And we just thought it was some sort of strong windstorm. Uh, and we were about to go about our shopping and one of the box boys came back in from outside where he'd been cleaning up the mess and he said, the town hall's down. And at that point, Mom and I looked at each other and said, holy cow, and without even speaking, we just went straight to the car and drove home. Problem is, when we got to Perry Avenue, uh, it was completely blocked with downed trees and poles, so we had to leave the car at the Brighton Public School parking lot, and we actually walked through neighbors' backyards to get home uh, because the power lines were everywhere, and we obviously didn't want to touch anything or get electrocuted somehow. And we left our tent trailer up in front of the car, and I looked out the window, and there was the tent trailer upside down in front of my door, because I wanted to make a trip up to see my husband. In the midst of everything, he uh, says to me, open the trunk in a hurry. <laughs> and uh, this beautiful oak armchair had come out of the old town hall, and it landed right square in front of the brewer's retail indoor. He uh, went out, come home, changed his clothes, 
and went out and cut trees down. We were going to see a friend uh, at their cottage up in Fenland Falls. Past the Highway 30 bridge on the 401, I can see this f field about, oh, maybe half a mile away, and uh, there's a storm in it. It's a, just a whirling dervish going in this field. And the car starts to shake, and uh, the rain is going right si sideways, and it's shaking like crazy. On Sunday afternoon, we drove through downtown Brighton, and it looked like a like a tornado had gone through there. It looked like a bomb had gone off. There wasn't a, there was hardly any big trees left downtown. I heard that Brighton had been heavily hit with the tornado. I decided to come up the next day. When I drove up to that main street, I could not believe the destruction, but only on the north side of the street. I began to snap pictures because I felt that there was going to be a need for recording all of this destruction. The trees that were just snapped off, the poor old town hall that was just basically a pile of bricks. I was only nine years old and at home with my mom on that beautiful summer day. My sister had just gotten a new dog and she had come up to visit my mom and I to show us this dog. While we were there, the kitchen cupboard doors kept opening on their own. And I remember my sister turning to my mom and saying, Mom, your house is haunted. Shortly after that, my dad, who had been at work, came barreling up the hill in his car, raced in the door, and he said, a tornado just went through downtown Brighton. And it was a Friday evening, and I was done my shift, and it looked like it was gonna be raining pretty heavily, so I called my dad. So he pulled out in front of the bake shop on Main Street. There was all of a sudden this big noise, and the town hall fell on top of our car. He threw himself over me so that I wouldn't get hurt. While the car, of course, was crushed and the windows were all broken, both of us were okay. We started honking the horn, and across the street on Main Street, there were some people in a store who had seen the building fall on top of us. And they came across the street, they pulled all the bricks off, and they pulled Dad and I out through the windows of the car. Mom always said that the council had been talking about what to do about the town hall as it got a little older and that God finally took it into his hands and made the decision for them, so that. I'm here to tell you about the destruction of the old town hall. It was a centerpiece for the park here and for Brighton. Um, the courtroom was downstairs, the jail was downstairs, and the upper floor was just grand. So our commencement exercises would be held here. There was a beautiful stage, there was opera here, there was vaudeville, I understand. The town hall is, was right behind where I'm sitting now, and I live across the street just north of here. So I had a real good view of what happened. I was, I was nine years old at the time. Around this property, nine very mature large trees went down, everything from mature maples to a catalpa tree. It was devastating, and all of a sudden, um, they were no longer vertical, but horizontally covering almost every patch of green in this yard. The, the storm that basically ripped from the northwest right down through Phillips, uh, Phillips Farm Supplies, and but right up the hill behind there, you could see a very distinct uh, path. A piece of debris flew through the master bedroom, the main bedroom, and, and went right. the glass went right down the hall from one end of the house to the other. In July of 1973, I was very pregnant with my first son. We went to Presque Hill to my mother's cottage. While we were there, we visited with my Uncle Charlie, and then we proceeded to get ready to come home. We looked out and saw how dark the sky was, and we were somewhat concerned. So as we headed home, we kept an eye on the sky. We realized that there were hydro lines down and trees down, and that we would have no choice but to park our car in the lot beside Morley Simpson's house. So we drove into that empty lot and walked through the cedar hedge to our home, which we were renting on Sanford Street. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I was driving from Melville to Brighton. Uh, we could see that it was beginning to rain and the clouds were pretty black and Anyway, by the time we got uh, 
the rain was torrential, you could hardly see where you were going. And then we got into Brighton and we could see the destruction and uh, along Main Street. I drove up Sanford Street to see where Shawnee was because I was worried about her. But anyway. you were out coming through the hedges and the sidewalks without worrying about down hydro lines. And so that I, was scarier than the, her, the tornado was. I grew up in Brighton with my family, but I was about 12 years old the night of the tornado in Brighton. I remember it clearly. For some reason, we all piled into Dad's car and uh, made the big trip a few blocks down to the post office. Uh, where dad ran in to get the mail. By the time he came back out to the car, it was a different kind of situation. The sky had turned green. It was eerie. Uh, the noise, the rumbling, the thunder was a long, loud rumble. It just didn't stop. And the wind had become unbelievable. As we sat in the car, screaming, I'm sure, uh, the the car started to lift. It lifted a bit and then settled down, lifted again and settled. It kept doing that and we weren't sure if one of the lifts would be the big lift and we'd be overturned. It passed, we lifted our heads up and looked out and it was a different scene in Brighton on Main Street. Henderson's Food Market had an outdoor display and all their watermelons and fresh fruits and vegetables and bowls and pitchers and everything had made their way down Main Street the town hall near where we parked had crumbled come it had come down a huge brick building when we went home the huge maple in front of the house had come down fortunately not on our house uh, but its roots were exposed just torn out of the ground a giant tree and it was that way all over brighton trees were on roofs roofs had been lifted off uh, fortunately there were no deaths, there were injuries, um, but it was a remarkable scene. And what really, what really uh, is, is impactful to me was not the devastation of the tornado. Uh, it was the miracle that no one was killed and, and there were very few even seriously injured. I think the biggest injury was a broken arm and the impact of this community coming together, the, the image uh, that people to talk about of, of the tractors coming in from, from the north part of the community to, to help people out and uh, the chainsaws starting up almost immediately after the tornado was through. That's Brighton right there. That's our community coming together to, to help one another out in, in our times of need. Um, the other thing I remember very distinctly is just not being able to sleep, uh, part, partly because of, you know, of the situation partly because the you know, chainsaws were going constantly. Uh, even into the evening, we heard chainsaws. And then sometime around one in the morning, I'm not sure who thought of this, we realized that we had all this food that was melting in the freezer. And I think my dad probably, being the, the um, sweets guy that he is, had the idea that we'd better eat all the ice cream. So at one in the morning, we ended up by candlelight, all six of us sitting around the dining room table, finishing off, I don't know, about three tubs of ice cream from the freezer. It's something that a person will never forget, the destruction. The large trees that were lost on Main Street. I've lived in Louisiana for quite a number of years and I've lived through several big hurricanes. Uh, I've never been so close to the heart of a storm as I was that night, Friday, July 13th. I think we were in shock and I'll never forget the incessant sound of chainsaws for the remainder of that very hot July. It certainly didn't look like the same town at all after after we got a chance to look at things. And uh, I got home and my dad and my three sisters were there and they were all terrified, of course. The six of us just kind of hugged in the front hallway. The storm united our small community. And in the immediate aftermath, people were outside helping each other and working together with a real sense of purpose in the midst of havoc and destruction. Now this was uncharted territory for Brighton, but with our strong sense of community, we rallied, rebuilt, and emerged better and stronger.
I was leaving my parents' house about 6.30 in the evening. The skies were sunny. I was walking to my boyfriend's house on Ontario Street. As I'm going across Butler, the winds pick up and the sky starts getting dark. As I approached Ontario Street, the sky was turning green and the winds were picking up even more. By the time I got to my boyfriend's house, the tornado was literally going over top of me. Got into my boyfriend's house and within seconds, everything was done. So we headed out the next morning, first thing, drove down, got down here, and yeah, it looked like a war zone. It was horrible. We were able to work our way down through to Butler Street, got it home. Here, there was a big maple tree at the front of the house, was blown over, uprooted, and laying on the house. There was a big maple tree at the back end of the house, it had uprooted and come to the north and landed in between the garage of the house and the garage and the house. No damage was done there other than the tree to gone. But it was you know, it was it was unbelievable, unbelievable. Grabbed the chainsaws, grabbed whatever we could and took off and helped wherever we could, cutting up trees, cutting off of houses, cleaning up what we could. You know, it was it was something I've never seen in Brighton before. You know, the, the camaraderie, the people getting out to help. It was just wild, it was just great. It was great. And I was standing at the kitchen window and I, the wind was blowing really hard and I saw this, something going through the air. We figured out that it was a piece of uh, steel plate from the roof of the barn on, on Sanford Avenue going downtown the next morning and just seeing people and all the chainsaws going it was you know, just starting to clean up it was uh, just it was just amazing it was yeah it was scary it was really scary <laughs> and the day of the tornado I remember in the afternoon in the sky looked so unnatural. The clouds were amazing. And I, I just kept going out and looking at the sky because I couldn't believe it. And then later in the afternoon, the sky turned this funny color, sort of like, like a green color. And uh, we didn't really know that it had struck the downtown part because of Brighton because we were on the fringes of it. But later somebody came and told us uh, we should go downtown and have a look, and we did. Then on uh, oh, July 13th, Friday the 13th, and that was 50 years ago, so my mom was 50, because she's 100 now, and, and I was, I was uh, 20. The two of us, uh, we got outside, and the air, the air went, it, I, can't hard, I can't even describe it, the air changed completely. It just became like I had heard before, dead. And that, I guess, is probably the best description, right, Mom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was electric. Yeah, it, and then we saw green sparks in the air, and this is on the farm in Hilson. So Mom and I, we didn't think much of it other than the cattle were acting peculiarly. They were running around in the fields, and as if you know cattle at all, they don't tend to do that. And animals were expecting something was different. I was just trying to remember, we talked to somebody that lived right on Sanford Street and they came rushing out of the house and he stopped them to talk to them. Do you remember yeah, who it was? Yeah, yeah, and they, and, uh, I don't they know were saying, oh, the, something terrible has happened, see? Look at the town hall. Yeah, the town hall, yeah. And, uh, and it, was, it was a pile of bricks. Yeah. Janet and I lived at 14 Mead Street and we had the hardware uh, downtown, the Dominion hardware, and I went home for dinner at six o'clock because that night we were going to be open until nine. And our picnic table was in the back of the driveway and the wind picked it up and took it all the way down our driveway across the street and through the carport at Ruby Johnson's house, struck another house flat bang on across from the Legion Hall and knocked the cupboards off the wall inside. 
at the hardware store, I had gone back to work. The roar was something else when that came through. And we had, in the hardware store, we had flyers hanging on wires across the hall, and it whipped all of those flyers right out of the store. The store was 186 feet long, and it rolled the rolled roof up on that, just like a donut, and took it over to the street going down to the high school. And that was about it. But to, from our house, we could look across towards uh, another street to the south of us, and it was Mrs. Velo lived there, and it cut her house in half like you'd see a dollhouse, and you could still see the clothes hanging in the closets upstairs. A very strange color of green, and it was so hot, unbearably hot. We got back to Brighton, and my mom dropped Brian and I off at her apartment, which is right by the United Church, and she was walking back to the clan shop. And about five seconds later, um, the wind picked up and it got extremely dark, and I noticed trees going by her living room window, put Brian in the stroller, went outside and noticed that there was a cedar tree upside down against her car. So we very quickly went over to the clan shop to make sure she was okay, and in a matter of seconds, the town had been basically destroyed all along Main Street. So uh, my husband at the time was coming down from Toronto that evening as we were going to a wedding the next day and he said it was like driving into a twilight zone. So it was very scary. <laughs> and the next day there were so many cars going through town for a number of days after I'm sure. So it was, uh, it was a very scary experience but one that I will never forget. I remember the tornado very, very well. It's one of those little clips in my brain that is just burned in there forever. I was, I had just turned six years old and I was outside playing with my brother and my best friend from two doors down and her family. And I remember that the sky went very dark and I could feel those heavy, heavy raindrops start. Then I remember seeing a chain lightning that looked like a ladder. It was like anything I've never seen before. And then our neighbor who lived in between the two families, Mr. Thorne, he came running out and yelled to us, get the hell home. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, this must be serious because I'd never heard him swear before. So Mark and I started to run home, which was just next door. And then I remember dad yelling to us to get inside the car in the carport. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is really serious. And forget that. And we just beetled it to the front door, ran in, and then we all went downstairs into the basement. I was on the main street of Brighton when the tornado hit. Uh, I was actually in Danny Thompson's office doorway and uh, saw the town hall implode. And uh, when I say implode, it went in and then back out again. And it landed on a car. It happened to be the Patterson uh, family car uh, with Mr. Patterson and one of his daughters in it. Uh, I quickly ran across the street because I knew they were underneath the debris and uh, pulled them out of the car. and. Uh, that was about it. It uh, was pretty scary. Uh, I have to say that John Martin, who owned the stationery store, he actually saw me go across, and he was there with me within about five, less than five minutes, and we were able to get Mr. Patterson and his daughter out of the car. And luckily, they were okay. And uh, Mrs. Patterson actually came and gave me a big hug and kiss. That's my story. <laughs> I'm John Raleigh. Uh, two of my friends were with me, Doug McMahon, Bill McMahon, and we're standing in the backyard of my grandmother's house behind the post office. We watched the town hall collapse and we saw we were in the middle of the storm. And uh, it took the steeple off the church and dropped it on Mr. Newman's car. And all the chairs were loose and the church were sucked up in the steeple. It's funny. All the maple trees were down the main street, 
They're all gone except for the four that stood in the front of the funeral home. My uh, grandmother lived next to my uncle, and my uncle was across the road, and my aunt was on the other side of the road. It hit all three of their houses, but didn't take a shingle off my grandmother's. Okay.